गुड डे स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मोनिका खेतरपाल आई एम एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर ऑफ फिजिक्स इन गवर्नमेंट डूंगर कॉलेज बीकानेर इन माई एनलाइटिंग सेशन ऑफ एम एस सी फाइनल फिजिक्स आई एम डीलिंग विद फिफ्थ पेपर दैट इज सॉलिड स्टेट फिजिक्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वेरियस क्लास ऑफ मैग्नेटिक मेटीरियल्स इन माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स so today we will discuss ferromagnetism what are ferromagnetic materials ferromagnetic materials are the materials which have spontaneous magnetization even in the absence of any external applied field that means if we have a material and we apply and we do not apply any field on it then still it will have a magnetic property and this magnetization is termed as spontaneous magnetization and this results in a ferromagnetic behavior in a material examples of ferromagnetic materials are pure iron the well known example cobalt nickel transition metal alloys these materials are ferromagnetic in nature the ferromagnetism is because of electron spin arrangement present in this type of material for example here this is the spin arrangement of ferromagnetic material here all the spins are parallel which results in a net magnetic movement this is the spin arrangement of anti ferro magnetic material the number of parallel spins in this case is equal to number of anti parallel spin similarly the spin arrangement in ferri magnet and anti ferri magnet material is shown in our previous lectures we have discussed superconductivity we know that superconductors are the materials which have zero resistivity or we can say in finite conductivity when the temperature of material is less than a particular temperature termed as critical temperature at tc material transform from normal to superconductor similar case exist in ferromagnetic material the ferromagnetic property disappear above a temperature termed as curie temperature above this the material will be paramagnetic just similar to superconductors above tc the material is normal and below tc material is superconductor similar behavior is here above tc that is curie temperature the material will be paramagnetic and below which the material will be ferromagnetic in nature now since these materials have itself magnetization and that magnetization is termed as spontaneous magnetization this magnetization is temperature dependent phenomena the variation of magnetization ms with temperature is shown in graph temperature is shown here on x axis and spontaneous mag magnetization denoted by ms is plotted on y axis we can see from this graph that when temperature is zero magnetization is maximum and in this graph the magnetization is denoted by ms0 and as the temperature increases we can see from the graph that 
magnetization which is termed as saturation magnetization it comes to zero at t equal to tc this tc is termed as curie temperature above this curie temperature susceptibility follow the curie v's law because as i have already stated above this the material will become paramagnetic in nature and the curie v's law is chi equal to c upon t minus tc here chi is the susceptibility c being the curie constant c is at a particular temperature t and tc is curie temperature so a ferromagnetic behave ferromagnetic material has a magnetization which is termed as spontaneous magnetization and they follow curie v's law and the other property is that in these materials we can divide a material into small region called domain and these domains are spontaneously magnetized now i am moving over to the another topic which is v's theory of ferromagnetism according to v's theory we have a ferromagnetic specimen and we divide this into small regions and these small regions are termed as domains and these individual domains they are spontaneously magnetized and we have to determine the magnetic moment of our ferromagnetic specimen for this what we have to do we have to take a vector sum of magnetic moment of individual domain so the main hypothesis of v's field theory is to divide a material into small region termed as domains now the second hypothesis of this theory was that within each domain there is a spontaneous magnetization the cause of this spontaneous magnetization is the existence of molecular field this molecular field is denoted by hm and this molecular field is proportional to the magnetization that means hm is proportional to m removing the proportionality sign we have a constant hm is equal to lambda m this lambda is termed as v's field constant and it is independent of temperature so for a material the affective field will be it will be the sum of external field capital h and the molecular field hm which has a value lambda m therefore h affective will be h plus lambda m now i have a ferromagnetic solid which consists of n number of atoms per unit volume and each atom has a total angular momentum quantum number j and for this the magnetization will be m equal to ng mu b j ba here ba is the brillian function it has a value denoted by the expression 2j plus 1 upon 2j cot hyperbolic 2j plus 1 upon 2j a minus 1 upon 2j cot hyperbolic a upon 2j parameter a has a value g mu b j upon k b t h effective on putting the value of h effective to be h plus lambda m here g is the linde g factor mu b is bohr mag magneton j is total quantum number m is the magnetization and lambda is the v's field constant 
now since we are dealing with the ferromagnetic material this ferromagnetic material is magnetized itself so there is no need of any external field here h is the external field hence for a ferromagnetic material we are taking h to be zero so putting h to be zero we get the value of a a equal to g mu b j upon k b t lambda m here i am writing in spite of m m as a function of t this is written to show that magnetization is a temperature dependent phenomena so i have obtained the value of a the saturation magnetization at 0 kelvin we have shown that it is maximum and it has a value ms0 equal to ng mu b j now i am dividing the value of mt obtained by this expression and ms0 using these two expression i get my this expression the ratio of mt upon ms0 is kbt a upon n lambda g square mu b square j square and dividing this expression which we have written earlier m by ms0 i get the value b a so these are the two equations of magnetization where we have obtained the ratio of magnetization at a temperature t and magnetization at absolute zero now i have to obtain the solution of these two expression the method used is a graphical method i am plotting these two expression simultaneously so here i can see that my first expression is temperature dependent the second expression is independent of temperature i am plotting the curve for three temperature range the first temperature range is above tc second being at t equal to tc and third is for t less than tc here tc means curie temperature since this expression is independent of temperature i will get only one curve so i am plotting m upon ms0 as a function of a this is the plot of m upon ms which is equal to b now there are different plots for different temperature range if i plot this expression with a these are the three curves which are for three different temperature range from this graph we can it is clear that for t equal to tc the straight line it cuts the brillian function at origin at that means at this point and the another point at which these two graph intersect is this the intersection at a equal to 0 is unstable non equilibrium condition and the other two curves they do not interact with the graph of brillian function that means we have obtained the solution of the two expressions by graphical method the point of intersection shows that the magnetization exists only when temperature is less than 
PC. And this magnetization exists even in the presence of, even in the absence of any external magnetic field. And for T equal to TC and T greater than TC, there are no intersection point of the two curves. Thus, we can conclude that a ferromagnetic material has a existence only when temperature is less than Tc and existence is possible even in the absence of any external applied field. That means at or above the critical temperature which is Curie temperature there is no magnetization that means ferromagnetism exists for temperature range T less than Tc. So students today we have discussed an important point that is V's theory. I am summarizing what I, what I discussed today. V's theory is based on basically two hypotheses. First is to divide a specimen into small regions called domain and each domain is spontaneously magnetized and the magnetic moment of the material will be obtained by vector sum of magnetic moment of individual domain. And the second hypothesis is that there is a molecular field and this molecular field is given by Hm is equal to lambda m. Here lambda is V's field constant and m is the magnetization. And from this theory we have proved that Ferromagnetism has a existence only when temperature is less than critical temperature and this critical temperature is termed as Curie temperature and ferromagnetic material has magnetization even in the absence of any external magnetic field. Thank you students for watching.